Have you ever canoed down a babbling brook? No, but I have cried at a Taco Bell. Oh, same thing. <laughs> Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. Because Camp Counselors is a variety show. So prepare for a good old-fashioned kumbaya, weird news, hot gossip, and scary stories around the campfire. So spooky. <laughs> is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. <laughs> <laughs> this is Camp, camp Counselors. Counselors. Hey, happy campers! Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch. It is week 46, and we're picking up sticks. That's right, I've been seeing an influx of sticks around camp. Could you just kindly pick them up? I don't care where you put them, but just pick up those sticks. One thing about me, I really enjoy kindling. I love to light a fire. I love a camp song. And I love the warmth and energy that comes with the campfire. So the sticks are welcome in my neighborhood. Yeah, until you go to bed in the same clothes that you were wearing at a bonfire and the entire bed smells like a bonfire. Wake up the next day terrible bonfire smell take a shower bonfire smell that's the simple solution babe you just take your clothes off and change before you get into bed are you telling me to go to sleep in the nude Ooh, baby <laughs> um anyways welcome back to camp shady birch everybody i am counselor zachariah i am counselor jonathan and speaking of smelling like things Ooh. after returning good segue <laughs> thank you so much i thought it then i said it um, we went on a little exploration trip today. Yeah, one of my favorite activities to do in the entire world, especially here in Massachusetts, is to go to the thrift store, to the antique store, and yes. just peruse the afternoon away. Yeah, so then it, it got us thinking, which we simply need to stop doing. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what are some things that we love and we hate about thrift stores slash antique stores? I have like a couple things that I want to say, but are we talking like across the board like because when i think thrift store i think like goodwill slash saber slash antique stores i feel like are a little bit more old like the one we went to today was like giving ancient it was giving old timey it was giving treasure trove yeah there's definitely a real difference between antique store and thrift store yes thrift store is clothing but for the sake of the show i think we should just refer to it as antique stores i'm talking a place that sells tchotchkes old mirrors haunted dolls that's what i, I love to look through because i think thrifting is a different conversation so let's focus on just antique stores okay gotcha right? gotcha 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 mm -hmm. so the second we walk through the doors i mean it's feeling magical but it's smelling a little less than magical i'm getting hints of musk mothballs musk, musk mold mothballs yeah but honestly sometimes i don't hate the smell of a mothball that is a private thought that you should have kept to yourself <laughs> that is sick thing you like that smell i didn't I didn't say I, I didn't say I liked it unless I did. Then I'm gonna have to edit that out. But I feel I you don't mind it. it. Here's it. the thing: when I grew up, my mom and pup pup's house in the basement, they had like a cedar chest that had mothballs in it. So I would smell cedar, I would smell the mothballs, and I would be teleported. So I feel like anytime I smell it now, nostalgic. Yeah, it's nostalgic. That's simply what it is. The same thing we were just talking about: the smell of tar or like <laughs> asphalt, wet hot tar on a hot summer day reminds me of the beach yeah that's you that's fine and that's your prerogative i think mothballs i didn't know what a mothball was until i was like 17 because like no one i knew like used them and then i was working at olive garden and someone came in reeking like mothballs and i was telling everybody how bad this table smell that was in my section everyone's like oh that's the mothball and that's when i figured out what that smell was wait that would be a cute name for like a dance like a butterfly dance like come on over like to the mothball wear your sunday's best at the mothball. Is this a senior citizen dance? Who's going to dance? Like yes, this? it's a senior citizen dance. Oh, that's kind of bullying, I feel. No, well, well, they don't have to know because they're kind of big fans, I feel. Yeah. Do people buy mothballs? I well, guess they're people, buying them. Yeah. Who's in control of their money, though? Anyways, back to the Sorry. antique store here. <laughs> Jonathan, what is one of your favorite things about an antique smell? I mean, antique store. What? I, why don't I tell you what I'm looking for? What are you looking for? I'm looking for Princess Diana plates. Okay. I have never in my life put a plate on display but i think it's about time that i do yeah and a princess diana plate is something that i'm interested in in having in my home one day you don't see enough ornamental plates on display anymore you really don't but when i see one i want one i am a really big fan of as you guys know um cooking gadgets that's where my like love of like doing cooking gadget demos came from was antique stores so for me i'm always on the hunt for a cool gadget that i've never seen before um, that's on my list. 
What else is on your list? Salt and pepper shakers. Yeah, you love those. I love a little antique salt and pepper shaker. A couple of months ago, I bought the um, Pillsbury Doughboy salt and pepper shakers. And I didn't realize that it wasn't really branded Pillsbury Doughboy. And I don't think it's real. I think it's like the knockoff. Yeah, it looks like a knockoff. It doesn't even look like him. Anyway, I like the cute little thing. If I find two turtle doves and they're kissing, you put the salt and pepper shakers together and they're kissing. Not enough people have salt and pepper shakers on their tables anymore. I think they don't buy those ones because they actually don't work. I think they're all like clogged all the time. I think they're cute ornamentally. A tchotchke on a shelf. Like I'm a really big tchotchke person. I just think for salt and pepper shakers, like I just need a real one because the one in our house that we have right now, the salt one does not work and it still sits in the cabinet and it takes up the size of at least three spice bottles and it doesn't even actually work. I got it to work a little bit. No, you didn't. Yeah, I put rice in it. It still doesn't work, babe. I tried it before we left. Well, it is cute when you open up that cabinet. It is cute. And They're he's cute. smiling back at you. So what else is on your, uh, what are you What are you goodwill hunting for? Um, I, I Like I said, I love a tchotchke. I love something that can sit on a shelf that has a little story. I almost today purchased these two little pigs that were dressed up in biker gear in front of a motorcycle. Yeah, what was and their deal? It was $8. The deal was I didn't need it. So mm. it wasn't really a deal. <laughs> but if it makes me giggle... I considered the purchase. And I do like that we have little tchotchkes around our house because each tchotchke has a little story. Yeah, I've been collecting little things like that since I was a kid and I can't stop and I won't stop. I like a bookshelf with little hidden trinkets. Yeah, but well, we have bookshelves of nothing but trinkets, so they're not very hidden. But I agree, they are very cute. The last thing I'm going to say that I'm looking for is the little collectible glasses from McDonald's. Do you know the ones I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. So they would either like come with some of them were like Disney movies. Some of them have the characters on them. So I saw one today. I saw a set of a, Di it was a, the Disney movie, the the 1990s, like Hercules. No, I'm sorry. Hunchback of Notre Dame. And it was in a box still. And it had like the plates and the glassware and stuff. And those plates. Oh my God. They always have the McDonald's plates. When yeah. I'm talking, when I say get out the good fine china for company, that's what I'm talking about. I love that. Yeah, do you own any fun. of yours still? I think your mom would keep those. She's like much like that. Too. Um, I think the ones that we have were the Welsh's jelly jars. Do you remember those? And it was like no. Dr. Seuss. We had a Tom and Jerry one. No, they there was like a, I don't know what year it was, sometime in the 90s. They would sell the Welsh's jam and it came with a little Dr. Seuss character around it. And um, I think those are the only ones we have. Oh, I've never heard of those. Before. Do you have any collectible glasses? No, 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 no. I, I, I don't need all that. I just feel like I'm consuming too much junk right now. And I just want to like kind of weed out the stuff I don't need, you know? We do have far too much junk. And something else I found before we left was uh, it was like a mystery bag, like the grab bag yeah, things. of course. And we were, Zach was like, oh my God, why don't you make a video out of this? Like, this will be fun. So we grabbed one for $10, or, I'm sorry, two for $10 and then one for $5. It's in a white bag. You can't see what's in it. You get what you get and it's fun, right? You guys, this was, this was a white bag and it was supposed to be a surprise, of, a, a goodies. And I know before we get into this, you're going to be like, well, you get what you buy for. You didn't know what you're going to get. Well, I expected a little more than what we got. My $10 bag, I open it and there's a whole bunch of paper in it. I guess they just don't want people feeling in it, trying to see what's what the goodies are. First thing I pull out was one of those plastic things that you get out of a 25 cent twisty thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had a necklace in it. It is supposed to be a gemstone. It is a fake gemstone. Couldn't tell you what it is, probably resin. I dig a little bit deeper to find glitter stickers. But because the temperature and the humidity in the antique store is so intense, they are no longer sticky. So they are just falling out all over the place. I scoop around a little bit more. And what else do I find? Another one of those little plastic containers. It's cracked, of course. I open it and it's, what would you describe that as? That was on the second one. It was like a piece of copper, um, a fake lapis lazuli and like, a broken piece of metal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on, a on a necklace chain. Yeah. yeah. That you're supposed to wear. And it's one of those chains that like, it was, what did you call it? It's like giving librarian. Oh, it's giving art teacher. Art teacher, Because it's yeah. going down to like uh, mid chest cavity. Like yeah. a little too low. Below you know I mean? the lanyard of keys. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. And then I was at the very bottom when I found two balloons. Two heart-shaped balloons. That was my favorite part because I blew them up in the car and you'll see in the video, but I thought that was fun. I was like, okay, two balloons. W do you think all that was worth $10? Absolutely not. Absolutely I not. Because the chain that was on it was that like the ball chain, the really loose, shitty ball chain that you would find on like a 
a keychain of some sort. So yeah. absolutely not. I would say at max, it was probably, especially at a thrift store, antiques or 350. Yeah. And the chain was an ugly color too. Yeah. Definitely going to turn the neck green. Definitely going to smell like moth balls. Yeah. Moth ball, neck green necklace. Yeah. So then you open yours. What's going on over there? So mine was like really puffy and big. And we selected these guys. There's a bunch there. And mine had like bubble wrap in it, like big, like to like block out the sides of it so you could tell what it was. And then there was a, 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 you know, it would appear to be smaller than a DVD, bigger than a cassette tape, shaped re like, like rectangular box, and it was wrapped. So then I opened it up and I, I, it was another cardboard box and it said made in China on it. And I unsealed that box. And I'm pulling out this like plastic insert and I pulled it out backwards. So I saw the underside of the plastic insert and it was dirty. Like it was covered in smudge. And we, and we can't expect them to be new. Well, I didn't, but I, I, a little wipe of that, I would have wiped it. And so then I flip it over and it was a dirty old Swiss army knife in the plastic cartridge that appear to have been used it was very used i just feel like these bags that we got that we paid ten dollars for should have been in the five dollar section yes Again. that's what my thing was and that was the only thing that was in your bag i think ten that was the only thing i got in my bag ten dollars is a little steep for what we received i'm not content with it but it was truly life scandal and then i'm like okay these aren't that great right i'm really disappointed but we have a backup yeah. The small $5 bag. Yeah, the dark horse. So I open it up. And at first, I'm like, okay, it's heavy. It's a little dense. It feels full. It's like a smaller bag, but it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my money's worth. Bitch, it was a bar of soap. It was a bar of soap. I feel like that person was making fun of us. They had to have been. Laughing in our face saying, you dumb fools. This was $26 and some change with tax. All sales are final. All sales are final. Imagine if we went back inside and we we're like, let's return this, please. Return, return, return. Well, they did have their, their social media handle and I'm not going to put them on blast, but I'm like, that's ballsy to be selling that and to have your social media handle out there for people to tag you in. I would rather have bought in a $20 scratch ticket and a $5 scratch ticket and won $0 because yeah. it would have been more exciting than what that was experience was. And not only was it a bar of soap, it said ye old fashioned, old with an E at the end. So you really are feeling how old it is. I love when old is written with an E. It instantly feels more old. Obviously. It said ye old fashioned bar of soap. And oh, lavender bar of soap. There was a lot of writing on it for how much space that there was. And it was hard as a rock. You know that it had been sitting in an attic somewhere and it did not smell like anything. Yeah. We got ripped off. We did. But it's the gamble, like we said. Overall, the antique store can be a treasure trove or it can be a mixed bag of trash. Today, it was the latter. But that's okay because, like I said before, the antique store has changed my life. I have found the best gems in it. But you have to just take your time and enjoy it. And we had a lot of fun just running around. I love looking at the mannequins. Yeah, the mannequins were crazy. They were out to play today. Yeah, it's like there's traditional mannequins and then there's antique store mannequins. And the mannequins at the antique store are always just like creepy. Yeah. They're What's always going on like with in them? a What's weird story? position. Yeah. Staring at you. So before we move on, can we just talk about things that we see a little too much? Yeah, of course. Glassware. Rows and rows of just glasses. So much glassware. So much like kitchen plates and bowls, like ceramics, all of it. It's just, it's, there's so much of it. You know what I'm sick of seeing at an antique store? What? A Wii controller. I'm sorry, but did you see that, one today? Yes, I did. Oh, really? And that Wii controller with the attachable Mario Kart steering wheel is nary an antique. Yeah. So many crockpots. So many crockpots. Also, so many baby dolls. Yeah. So many little ornamental statues of dolls. Mm. And it's, I don't think we're collecting dolls like we <clears throat> used to. You know what I mean? No. Maybe an uptick in Barbie now because of the movie, but I'm not seeing it in the baby doll category. And the, I'm talking about the porcelain ones, the baby dolls that are in full glam. Like they just got their rollers out. They have a little rouge, a brown lip, a smoky eye, but yet they're dressed in some sort of seafarer colonial wear. What happened to rouge? What Rouge is still available. They just remarketed it as blush. That's very true. And you know that the person who's like selling it always up, like jacks up the price to like 
$90 for a really nice looking doll, but nobody's collecting anymore bags. No, and it's 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 dry rotting and it's and it's humid. It's a humid environment. And there's a soul in there. And there's always in the one we go to, there's always like fans on. Like they always had like water damage recently. What is it doing? Also books. Too many books. Too many books. And these books are like the ugly, dirty books. Yeah. Smelly books. You'll find a lot of like Dr. Phil books in there. You know the one that I always see? Dump cakes. I will always find a dump cake cookbook. What is a dump cake cookbook? I couldn't tell you what it is, but it sounds silly, but I always see a dump cake. I've never seen those before. Well, I'll have to point it out to you. I saw one today. Uh, I'll have to point it out to you next time. And the last thing I'm sick of seeing are uh, tissue box covers. I like those. I never want one, but I do like them. I think they're funny. They're like a weird crochet plasticky. Do you know the one that I'm talking about? I They come in all shapes and sizes. I like a wooden one. Okay. I'm never going to get one, but you can you can like a wooden one. Sure. If I'm at a resort, a la <laughs> an Airbnb by the sea, okay. and they have a nice baby blue wooden tissue box cover behind the toilet, and I pull it out, I like that. I think it's nice. I don't want one for my own home, but I do think there's time and place. Okay. All right. So, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, maybe someone's out there looking for a, a tissue box cover now as we speak. It's just it's not a thing you think of to do on a rainy day or a day where you just want to be inside. But like, guys, get out there and start antiquing. You might find a gorgeous end table, a gorgeous chair, a mirror, a print. These are all really fun. You know, what I just saw on TikTok. I wish I was good at oil painting or like any form of like painting but i saw this girl she went to the thrift store and she bought like a print that she didn't really care about and then it was like a, um like it's kind of like whimsical cottage core beautiful like setting and on like a little like i don't know a little cabin and she painted little ghosts on it that's cute so there's little ghosts in the picture and then she hung it on her wall so it's like a classic like just normal print it wasn't like a beautiful paint it was a print and and she painted little ghosts on I it i love that it's giving phoebe bridgers that's just like fun right that is fun that's cute if i did that it would look like shit though yeah i'd be like what is that like people who just like whimsically paint and they're like it just looks gorgeous like artistic people are so annoying because it's like we get it you're amazing at everything but i can't be and that's why i have to watch it online <laughs> i have the ideas i don't have the skill set or the stamina attention campers please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements Welcome back to Morning Announcements. Hi, campers. This is the part of the show where we're going to share some news with you that you might have missed that we think you're going to love. I actually really love mine, but I want you to go first today. Okay, I'm going to go first. So this is an article coming from NPR by Dustin Jones, and it's titled, An Otter in Santa Cruz is Harassing Surfers and Stealing Their Boards. Ooh, I love a naughty otter. <laughs> a naughter. <laughs> So this is taking place at Steamer Lane, which I think is a fun name for a butt crack. Yeah, where's Steamer Lane? It, it's in Santa Cruz. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So uh, Steamer Lane, <clears throat> excuse me, Steamer Lane is a legendary point break nestled along the rocky shores of Santa Cruz. So it is home to experienced surfers as well as a five-year-old female sea otter with a growing reputation for repeatedly confronting surfers and kayakers oh so she just like kind of terrorizes the locals <laughs> yeah so i've actually been um confronted by many aggressive otters in my life but they've all been at gay bars in philly mm, Sorry, typical. I, I had to okay so there have been these videos across social media i actually saw one but it wasn't this otter it was like a friendly otter that was jumping on someone's surfboard somewhere else in california and like surfing alongside and this is kind of how this started out where it's just like cute a little otter's hopping up and he's jumping on people's boards and he's trying to you know shred some gnarly waves um but then he she i'm sorry she started turning like a little evil she had a little evil look in her eye and she's just bullying people off of their boards so the people in the background of these videos can be heard laughing but you know who's not laughing who the officials of the u.s fish and wildlife services who say this otter poses a public safety risk what does that mean? What, what What's the safety risk of the people or of the otter? Um, probably both. It's just kind of like the environment as a whole. So here's the quote from Emma. I'm going to read it verbatim. While there have been no confirmed reports of injury due to the highly unusual behavior of this otter, kayakers, surfers, and others in the area should not approach the otter or encourage the otter's interactions, they said in a statement. 
Um, so the USFWS said that the otter's behavior is, quote, concerning and unusual. And though the exact cause is unknown, officials believe it is a hormonal surge or it's being fed by humans. They're not really sure which, but it's just like getting a little too used to people being around. So southern sea otters are actually listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act and are protected under the Marine Mammal Act as well as California law. So I guess from like the 1700s to the 1800s, they were nearly extinct because like poorly dressed people would just kill them on the shores and just, I guess, wear whatever otter skin that they had. Um, And then they were just kind of getting it on on the beach when they became protected and they were just repopulating like crazy. So the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Manterey Bay Aquarium are looking for the otter to catch and rehome her. Unfortunately, once an otter is caught, um, she will not be able to be returned to the wild. So they're like, this girl is out of control. The only thing we can really do is like, I don't know, because where where else would they put her? I don't know. I'm not a professional. Why are we getting rid of the otter? I think because it's just wreaking havoc in the area, I suppose. No one seems to be upset except the, the government. Hey, you're on to something. She's having a good time. She's vibing. She's on her little surfboard. She's enjoying her truth. Okay? As long as she's not hurting anybody and no one's hurting her, let her live her life out on the open water. Well, here's what here's here's the thing. The otter's name is Otter 841. That's boring. I'm changing that. I know. I want to talk about that in a minute. Alice. I, I love that. Alice is nice. Thank you. Um, so Otter 841. I hate that. Was actually born in captivity. Oh, <gasps> wait, the plot thickens. Yeah. So its mother had also been friendly with humans and then successfully released into the wild in June 2020. So Alice, Otter841, has been like out here doing this since June 2020. Was she born in a circus? A God zoo? O- God only knows. See, that's why she's so playful because she grew up so silly. Real otters in the wild, they have to like fend from the jump. She was like, no, no, no. Y'all are bringing me sardines and, and grapes every four hours on command. Yeah. That's why I'm out here just doing tricks. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, I'm kind of like piecing together everything that I'm reading while I'm reading it. Um, and I guess that, that is why they're saying like, hey, if we capture this girl, girly pop, she can't go back into the wild because this is how they act. Yeah, so, like, honestly, they, it's, like, when you let your kid, like, go out and, like, again, and they're, like, hey, like, be back by curfew, and they break curfew, and you're, like, no, 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 you can't do that again, you're grounded, like, this was her, like, open opportunity to, like, be a good otter, and she's out there, and she's, like, no, 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 I know too much, I know what the people love, I know what they want to see, I grew up at the Ringling Brothers Circus, and I'm here to perform, (laughs) but the girl's working for peanuts, and she should just go back to the circus, or maybe she'll get fat a sardine. Oh, I love that. Alice, if you're listening, because I'm sure you have access to podcasts because you are a genius otter, um, calm down, girl. Really take some time off because I want you to live this one out on the open water and not back in captivity. But we'll see. We'll, we'll just have to naturally wait and see. I do love the name Alice for her. Because Otter 841, it's just, where is she going to find that on a keychain at the Milford, Connecticut rest stop? She's, She's not, not. going to find it. She's not. What would you want to name her? Uh, Darla. Darla's really cute. I like I like things that have an OO. Like Olivia. Or There's only one O. Like no, like Olivia Otter. Oh, like Olivia O-O. Otter. Oh. Yeah, like the alliteration. Or we could name her Constance since she's a constant threat to society. Yeah, I like that. I love that they're labeling her as a threat and she's like, girl, I'm literally surfing. I'm looking for a Disney Pixar deal. Like just relax. Just please. Shut up. I'm Olivia Otter. Please. Proud of her and I love her. And that's my story. So what have you got for us? Switching tracks a little bit here. My article is a little different. Um, Hotels.com announced their inaugural room service report. Okay, what does that mean? So, yeah, it's a lot to digest there. So let me break that down for you. Essentially, a deep dive research analysis went into room service trends, and they they surveyed 473 hotels across 16 countries and compiled some data on how people order, what people order, and what is crazy that people order. All right. So these are three fun facts that I got from the article. Um, Number one, the most popular item ordered in room service. Would you like to make a guess? Um, uh, Personal pan pizza. Close. It was the burger. Mm. The burger. And not only in the U.S., but globally, the burger rang in at number one, um, beating out fan favorites like pizza, club sandwiches, and even fries. See, you can't really trust fries everywhere. Yeah, I was shocked. I would say pizza or fries would be higher. I love that they included the club. 
because you know I'm a club girl. Yeah. So for me, that was a really sweet gesture and just like a nod to me, I think, personally, because I knew that I was going to read this on the show. <laughs> um, number two, 43% of U.S. hotels surveyed um, says guests prefer more casual cuisine behind closed doors, a la burgers in bed, which I get. Okay, more casual cuisine well, behind I, closed I kind of cut some stuff out there towards the end, but they were like, hey, like people, so basically they're like, hey, people are not ordering like steak and rubies. Right, who wants to eat spaghetti in their hotel room? Well, that's that would be actually more casual, I feel, than you like think? La- lateral. Like, they're not like people aren't ordering like tuna crudite and like lobster bisque. Like they're like really going for the pizzas. Yeah, obviously. Well, I thought that was obvious too, but they put that as a fun fact. Okay. Um, last one. Over a quarter, twenty seven percent of U.S. hotels said their guests will go out, go all out while ordering, spending over a hundred dollars for room service. I feel like it's because people come home drunk and nothing is open. Yeah, and you know what? Room service is already expensive as it is. So you might as well go all in. I didn't really. We ordered a lot of room service, and when we were in um, Las Vegas, and I like never order room service. We did. We also ordered a lot of room service on the cruise. Yeah, but that's 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 willing at the cruise. Like people know that's a thing at the cruise. But typically, what I'm seeing at the Marriott, they don't really have room service. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. Only certain hotels really have it. Um, they also gave us an insight to the most unusual request they've ever they've received this year. Oh god, that was kind of funny. Their hotels were like, "Hey, like, let us know if anything crazy came through." So, um, number one, um, diet water was a request. Shut up! I'm not joking. This was these really get weird. What does that mean? Um, someone was like, "Hey, like, don't bring me any of that sugary shit. I want the straight ice and water." Okay. Number two, uh, melted ice cream. Why? Babe, I can you can't ask me why every time because it was just a list. So okay. I can't tell you why. We can only infer why. And I would assume that Alice the Otter <laughs> got a room at the Best Western and said, Baby, it's it's Big Otter's time out. And I want some melted vanilla bean. What would be the best melted ice cream, do you think? I would want mint chocolate chip. Oh. Because I don't have to brush my teeth. Yeah, but then you have like mint, like a cluster of chocolate chips. As a as a closeted mint chocolate chip lover, I would want that. I'm but I don't talk about it publicly because of the shame that you just threw my way. I think a melted chocolate or a melted strawberry would do just fine. Yeah, I'm fine with it. I wouldn't order it, but if it happens, it happens. But yeah. I would be pissed if I ordered it or if I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. What else are people saying? Blowfish. Blowfish? Yeah, which I think is just funny because clearly that person ordered it and it wasn't on the menu. What's a blowfish? Like a blowfish. Like Oh, like the spiky thing? Like a puffer fish. Do, can people eat that? Um, well, they tried and they didn't get it. All right. Boiled bottled water. Maybe they're making uh, a baby bottle. Or tea. Yeah. I, I can that one's not that That crazy. one's not that weird. A cooked fish that the guest brought with them. Now there's something wrong here. I think they might have caught it on the vacation, brought it back to the hotel and asked they could cook it. But it's just, it's the nerve of some people. It's the gall. It's the gumption. To insist that the hotel staff cook the weird little striper that you caught on your lake excursion on Lake Michigan. You're also assuming that that's what they did. Who's to say they didn't throw it in the suitcase with an ice pack? They said, I love this tilapia. I can only get it in southern Florida at a Kroger. So I brought it up. Can you please... Put some boiled potato on the side for me. Thank you so much. I feel like it would be different if this was somebody who like was avoiding gluten or was vegan or something. But it's not. It's a fish. Yeah. The no egg white omelet. So I had to like think about that. So I'm like, so it's just yolk. That's thick. That is thick. That is marigold and creamy. Have you ever like thought about doing that? No, but I am now. I'm like, would it be good? Let's do it tomorrow. That's creepy. That's weird. Okay. Um, rice bowl for a dog. That's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. Maybe the dog was sick. Can dogs have rice like that? Yeah, yeah they have. Yeah, that's the filler can. in their food. Duh, yeah. Jonathan. Um, and then eggless eggs in hell. Do you know what eggs in hell is? No. It's um that like shakshuka. It's like that like dish where it's in like a big red pan. There's like eggs in it. No. But I don't think that was that crazy crazy it's just like a normal dish but they just got it with no eggs they're probably just vegan well then what else is in it just vegetables and broth it's kind of like this stew i've never really had it it's always okay. on blue apron they like love to be like make this make this make this interesting but yeah. without eggs also hotels are taking their in-room dining to the next level with out of the ordinary room service experiences okay Experiences. These are, cool. these are cool. Ready for this? Okay. So like a list of these like crazy hotels, like things you can do privately in your room that you can like pay for, like excursions. 
It's cool. In your hotel room? Yeah, you'll hear. All right, okay, okay. So at the Milestone Hotel in London, UK, treat yourself to a world-class musical performance with an in-room concert from the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Suites from $1,500 per night and orchestra quoted on individual basis. How is this working? So if you have like a certain suite there that's big enough, you can for like at the baseline, $1,500, like the Royal Philharmonic will come into your room and be like, dun, 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 and while you just lay in your bed, like I eat, no. eating your rice. That's all I can think of. Do you remember when we were in Las Vegas and the guy rolled in the cart with the food and I was so drunk and I was like turned over and he proceeded to like take every plate off of like the tray and like rearrange the room. And I was like, sir, please leave. I'm so sick right now. And then he apologized to me. He was like, sorry, I'll try to be quiet. And I was like, I don't see the effort. But I'm not gonna say anything. And I wasn't. I was more embarrassed. I didn't care because he was he was hand delivering me a Reuben sub. I mean a Reuben sandwich that I ate with my eyes closed. Guys, if you ever ate a Reuben sandwich with your eyes closed in bed, drunk, we ate nachos in the dark. <laughs> yeah, we've eaten a lot of things on some weird circumstances. <laughs> At the Post Oak Hotel in Houston, um, you can get this thing called the Ultimate Hotel Burger. It's like a black and gold burger, which has 16 ounces of Wagyu beef, which is like the best kind of beef, apparently. Seared foie gras, I don't know what that is, and black truffle in a caviar-infused 24-carat gold brioche bun. People love to pull this kind of shit. They do. It's a headline grabber. It gets the buzz it going. Is. That's but what it's, it is. Also, like, get more fucking creative. I don't need any more gold leaf in a burger. No. And also, it's like, I would just, I, I, I could get a great burger at McDonald's for $4. Like, I know how to have a good burger. Like, a good burger can only get as good as it's going to get. Yeah. Guess how much that burger costs. Oh, God. You have to guess. Um, How much gold was in it? 24 carat. On the brioche bun. Um, With the Wagyu and the black travel. I'm going to say... Uh, the truffle is probably more expensive. Do you know how they get truffle? No. They have to have wild hogs sniff them out. That's why they're so expensive. It's literally like they work like dogs. And you, you there's a certain brand, or not brand, breed of pigs that can smell at the little truffle. I think they call truffle pigs. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but I call them truffle pigs. Feral hog community continues to grow and impress the masses every single day. And there's no stopping them. And as a member of the feral hog community, I would just like to salute my sister hogs. For their truffle snouts. I love that. How much is this um, burger, you think? I'm going to say $400. $1,600. Girl. And the room is $540 a night. Does it come with a drink? It comes with fries. Oh, okay. Well, and we... it's Diet Coke if you're lucky. Okay, we have that going for us. One more. Okay, this one's cute. I like this one. Um, the Plaza Hotel, New York City. Okay. Famous. Um, this hotel is home to one of the most famous room service orders, the Home Alone Sunday. Featuring 16 scoops of ice cream and layers of toppings for $300. That is cute, though. Yeah, it's from Home Alone 2. Yeah. And they, like, just kind of, like, added it to the menu, which I think that one's cute. It's obviously, like, ridiculous. It's $300, but, like, of all of them, that one might be the one to sparge on. That is cute. Home Alone 2. One of those movies that, like, the sequel is better than the original. Yeah, I think maybe not better in my opinion. I think they're equally good because I, like, love the first one so much. Yeah, I agree. The second one is also great. But I feel that way about Shrek. Shrek 2, I think, is better than the Shrek, Shrek original one. I think Shrek 2 did the most amazing job at introducing new characters that we equally care about now. Puss in Boots. Yes. Um, Joan Rivers. Mm, that was so funny. When Sleeping Beauty comes out of the um, limo and she falls yeah. in her face. Yeah. You couldn't tell me at 10 years old that wasn't peak comedy. I said, bitch, I'm on the floor with her. I'm laughing. <laughs> I love it. Let's watch Shrek tonight. We should, promise. I will. Okay. Get out of the water and onto the dock. You're not going to believe what I just heard. Welcome back to Gossip Doc. It's been a minute since we did one of these. I know, but this one came through the email and I thought, this is so silly and so quick and I want to read it because it made me laugh. So this is the part of the show where we read your emails that you send to us at camcounselorspodcast.com um, or camcounselorspod at gmail.com and just like just a little gossip, just a little something fun, not too deep. But fun and silly. So uh, let's get into it. Yeah. So this caper wrote in that she knew this girl or she knew a girl that knew this girl. It's kind of a little convoluted there, but the story is just hilarious. So there's this girl. Let's call her Ashley. She went on a beach vacation with her boyfriend and his family for the first time since they started dating. 
You know how monumentous that is, vacationing with your partner's family for the first time. Yeah, It really is a big, a big step. Mm -hmm. Well, day four rolled around and she had still had not pooped. A mix between typical vacation stock up, that's so funny, and shyness <laughs> about pooping in a shared bathroom with people you want to impress. Ashley's stomach couldn't take it anymore. Girl. I hate when you can't poop and you're traveling. I've talked about this before. It's just, it's a very difficult process. And then you add the stress on with being someone else's family in a shared house. Is this one bathroom? We're not really sure. What is it about traveling and not being able to poop? Do you think it's like subconsciously you're, you're like, your psyche is like, we are not in a safe space that we're used to releasing the demon. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, for me, if I'm flying, there's a pressure change. And one thing about my colon, it's a colon of consistency. Like it wants to have a balanced and an and understanding of where it is at all times. And when I put it up in the air, it it gets vertigo. I, my colon is diagnosed with its own set of vertigo. And that's yeah. what happens when I travel. It just spins around in there and it's just like trapped and it doesn't know where to go. It doesn't help know up me. from down. That's why it's stuck. Help me. Help me. I'm clogged. Um, Before you move on, just it, the grossest thing. When I went to Iceland... Seven days. Yeah, that's almost medical. I would have called the hospital. I, yeah, I should have gone. Um, also, the food wasn't that great, so I wasn't eating much. Uh, I also had pneumonia, so. Yeah, you had a lot of ailments. Yeah, so I was on a lot of medications. Anyway. Okay, so one night, they all had dinner together, and she, like, politely excused herself and went up to the bathroom on the second floor, and she was like, finally, like, this is my moment. I can, like, breathe and get all of this poison out of me. Oh God. Unfortunately, <laughs> four days worth of holding it back meant the toilet was suffering. Oh yes, God. the toilet got clogged. And of course, there was no plunger in sight. Too shy to tell her boyfriend what had happened, she took matters into her own hands. Not literally. Literally. No. <laughs> Our heroine opened the bathroom window and began to empty the toilet with her bare hands Girl. tossing her shit out of the window after all desperate times call for desperate measures with the toilet unclogged her hands fully cleaned ashley eventually made her way back downstairs feeling emotionally and physically relieved okay like i feel like at that point she's probably like you know what i knocked on death's door and i survived and i came back from hell okay like not only was she feeling so sick and got all out of her she did problem solve can you imagine, if you're watching this on YouTube, right behind me is the kitchen table. Can you imagine sitting at that table in that window right behind? Like, they just see, like, turds coming down. A nightmare. Well, upon her re-entrance, she knows everyone's staring up at something. Unfortunately, Ashley had thrown her poop out of the window and not onto the grassy area. She had thrown her poop out of the window and onto a skylight, <laughs> splattered across for everyone to see. Please take a moment of silence for Ashley's self-esteem. I don't know the rest of her story beyond that point. All I know is if I were in that absolute situation, I would simply bury myself alive. Oh <laughs> my God. Mary, am I speechless? But Mary, I am speechless. How did she not look at the layout of the house and not realize that that could be where it was going to be? I don't know. She could have just been panicking. Yeah. Well... Were they all under the skylight? Because it's must like if, have been. if the light was on, she really should have seen that and looked out for herself. Maybe she thought she was throwing it a little bit further. I don't know. Well, I don't think she was thinking. But I don't know how far. Like what that? Like I don't know how far I could throw a turn. Imagine they're just like casually like eating their Caesar salad, and it's like you look up, and it's like corn salsa. And literally, like th there's no explanation yet that she had clogged the toilet and what she's doing. So they're like, "What is that girl doing?" That she just went upstairs and now we're getting shit yeah, like on our just, shingles. Yeah, there's just, there's no, there's the timeline isn't adding up. And hey, dessert was served <laughs> and it, no one ate it. Poor Ashley. I had to share that with you guys. It's disgusting. Grab your bug juice and bear spray campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Welcome back to Take a Hike. This is the part of the show where we bitch a little and we tell you what we hate, what's really grinding our gears, what's getting on our nerves. Jonathan, what do you want to ask to take a hike this week? Boring, stupid, or cliche book covers. I know. I know you have a lot to say about this. So 
We're always told, don't judge a book by its cover. I haven't stopped judging books by their covers. It's truly, I had talked about it before on this podcast, but I read The the Housemaid. I always want to say that Handmaid's Tale. I've never read that book. I've never read a day in my life. But The Housemaid, the cover is so dumb. It is a door with a girl's eye looking through the keyhole. I get it. And it's like... Nobody really pays attention to that, right? Because it's what what's in between the binding that matters. But I think it's such a stupid cover for such a good book, which I get it. Don't judge a book by its cover. But why do we have stupid covers to begin with? It's just a missed opportunity to not like just really step out and show out with a good book cover. And we don't need the cliches either. The only reason I picked up that book was because you looked at it and you said, this is the dumbest cover I've ever seen. And I said, that is really stupid. And then I just, I read the back of it and I said, oh, I, this actually sounds good. But it wasn't the cover that drew me. I don't need to see another eye peeping through a keyhole. I don't need to see another like fake tear of paper across the eyes. You know what I'm talking about? Almost like, yep. like Gone Girl. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Oh, a mysterious staircase where the font grows a little bit bigger with the depth perception yeah, of the some sort stairs. Of, some sort of flowers with like petals that are like cascading. Yeah, we don't need all that shit. You know, I actually wrote, I'm, I should revisit this. I wrote a whole first draft of a novel. It is a paranormal adult novel and I created the cover art for it too. It's like a girl and a guy model. They're super hot. And the guy is um, like transparent. He's like at like 25% opacity because he's a ghost. Because in reality, he's transparent in his communication. He is not. Um, but that's a work in progress. We're working on that. But if like you're not creative with the cover, we can just leave it at the, the text. You can leave it to the text. We don't need the clip art. We don't need the back of a girl on the beach with her arm up like this. And she's just resting. And it's like her summer getaway. We don't need to see that shit. If you need to just keep it plain and simple, John Grisham. His books are selling like hotcakes. I don't even know if hotcakes are selling anymore, but the Bellican Brief, that was the most boring cover I could ever find. Great read, though. Yeah, I just, I think, like, if you're looking around, they either all look the same or it's just, like, incredibly tacky. And I hate to approach a situation with no solution, but it's not my job. I'm not clocked in at the publisher. But you know what I am clocked in? On this podcast, and that's why I showed up today. Yeah. It's like, just everybody clock in for a minute. Everybody yeah. do your job at the publishing house and get a little creative. Let's get some new artists on the team and let's just really put our noggins together and start wowing us. Because at the Barnes & Noble, I'm really wowed. I'm rarely getting wowed. And I look to be wowed all the time. I'm constantly craving the wow. Exactly. Not getting the wow. Is that too much to ask for? Is it too much to ask to be wowed? And guess what? It'll sell more books. So it's a win-win. Okay, but I do want to mention, book-wise, um, I am looking to start reading um, Amish Smut. You keep talking about this, but you don't ever start it. Just read the Amish Smut, babe. I have a couple of books on my list, and then I'm going to go to the Amish Smut. But can I read you some of these titles? Yeah, of course. These books. So these are actual, like... Uh, adult quote-unquote adult novels but it's it's amish so i don't know how far up the girdle we're gonna get here are they punny uh, no they're like some of them are written by um amish people or formerly amish people so i don't think they're being too crazy let me just get into it okay okay mending fences that's romantic i can see the storyline unfolding with that title and i love that and their legs are like twisted up in bed like mended fences Ooh. Room on the porch swing. The sexual tension between two Amish people must be palpable. Yeah, absolutely. Oh man, I love it. The Barn Builder's Daughter. A L tale as old as time. The most famous woman in any Amish community is by far the Barn Builder's Daughter. Yeah, there's she, no doubt about it. She is valuable beyond her means and she knows her way around a barn. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for women that know their way around the barn. As an Amish man seeking an arrangement with a woman, I'm looking to marry the barn builder's daughter and I'm buying a sequel too. Hey. Yeah, come on, barn builder. <laughs> it was a little hey joke. <laughs> <laughs> Harvesting love. That's sweet. I don't love that one. That I would read that one. Simple. How about this one? This is pretty straightforward. Churning his butter. Now this one. That just put a little twang behind my eyes. She's got to use both hands. She's got to, yeah. Guess what? She she knows how to work it, and she's gonna work it beyond her years. Falling for the Amish bad boy. Mm, who? What is an Amish bad boy? Is I don't know. Like, yeah. What is Jebediah getting up to? Truly. Uh, and then the last one is courtship in the crops. That's Ezekiel, cute. I like that. Ezekiel and Mary will find love among the grains. 
I loved like watching all of like the COVID Amish couples, like when they were on Rumspringer. Like that was so crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Thank God that wasn't my life because I would have left. Yeah, I don't know how I would survive. Part of me wants to be like, oh, I think I could probably do well. Um, well, first of all, we're gay, so it's not like looking great for us. No, it's it's not. It's really not. You're right. I probably wouldn't bode well at all. Oh my god! And they make absolutely fantastic furniture. I couldn't do it. You're we right. visited the Amish once in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and you can like sit on the little buggies, and it is truly a treat. Mm-hmm. And they make great breakfast, and they make great furniture, and also, if you ever want. Of dog they have a lot of them oh my god wait if you're ever in lancaster pennsylvania agape cafe was the best breakfast we've ever had we've both come to agreeance mm-hmm. the best breakfast i've ever had in my entire life yeah was at agape it's it's truly it's 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 what you want when you get breakfast it's mm-hmm. just fresh it's right and an amish woman serves you and yeah it just it, it like make it, it adds like a layer of like just excitement it was absolutely fantastic. So anyway, that is how I kind of twisted my take a hike into something sweet. I just wanted to end on like a sweet little note. And I like um, I like and I wanted that. to put a pin in it for myself to go back and make sure that I'm checking out these titles on Goodreads. Anyway, what are you uh, what are you telling to take a hike? I am telling um, people who like massages to take a hike. Okay. <laughs> okay. I guess not the people, but just the idea of massaging. But getting massaged by strangers is just something in my in my world in my realm is, is so incredibly um, off putting and scary and sad and anxiety inducing. Yeah. I've never had a professional massage. Nor I. Can you believe it? I know I look like the type, but I've never had one, and for a multitude of reasons. Number one. I am be above average ticklish, I feel. Uh-huh. If you touch me in a certain way, I do, I do not like to be gingerly touched. I agree because then I start throwing hands and I cannot be account- like I I'm not accountable for what I'm doing if you're tickling me. Yeah, exactly. It's like don't don't I don't know you and I'm I'm tense. So in a, in, a, in an instance where I'm supposed to be relaxed, now I'm feeling weird you yeah. know what i mean and all, number two i don't know this person i don't know who's touching me so would you rather have like your old gym teacher do it no, you okay like you could like that's something between partners okay hubba, relationships hubba. you know i don't need mary beth who graduated with a lovely associate's degree in massage therapy from the salter school to be working at my corns oh my god even worse what if you walk into the room and you like can't really get out of it and it's an old classmate that you did not get along with holy shit what the fuck do you do they should have it on the website where you pick who massages you that is but so also true. it's like poor i feel bad for the massage therapists because like i would never massage a man in my life you can't trust them they're horrifying people true it just like it the whole thing is ass backwards to me if i want to go somewhere to unwind i'm not gonna have a stranger touch me that just seems so incredibly stressful Uh, to be honest i don't understand how people like massages i understand that it's supposed to be relaxing but also my the way my stomach gurgles and the way that i am so acutely aware that not only i hear it but whoever else is in the room with me hears it like i'm all set i don't need that also i have two sensitive spots on my back my mom used to tell me it's where my angel wings fell off but like my nerves on my back are actually like against my skin so if you gently brush it it feels like i got the wind knocked out of me and if you massaged it i haven't experienced it but i'm sure all hell would break loose i know it's like i'd rather like walk around my entire life with chronic back pain than have some stranger work out my knots yeah i'm gonna invest into a, th- a the theragun we should get a theragun those are nice see that's like doing the job at home it's like it's ai a- theragun <laughs> and ai yeah took took the job of the therapist i like that you like that <laughs> sorry <I just> burned. <laughs> see if i was getting a massage there would be no escaping the gas that's escaping my body i know i was thinking i was watching something on tv and it was showing they're talking about like pregnant girls getting massages or something like that were we with somebody? I'm not sure who it was. I don't think I watched it with um, you. Oh, Mia was getting a massage this week. Oh. And we were talking about how funny it would be if they like cut out the circle on the massage table where the belly would go <laughs> in. Because they can't lay on their they can't lay on their stomachs. That would probably dead ass if they did that. And maybe they put like a little secured like cocoon under the table. That would probably be so comfortable because it she hasn't laid like that in like however many months since the belly starts coming in like six months. I know. And I always sleep on my stomach every single night. And I don't know how they like, you just stop doing that. 
Yeah. The little bean. Yeah, and you're sleeping for two. My God. So she likes massages. Most people do. I'm alone yeah. in this. I know. I'm, I know. I'm the minority. But you know what? If <clears throat> you don't stand for anything, you'll fall for anything. That's not the phrase, but that's what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Take a hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle campaign. Over. Welcome back to Camper Crush of the Week. This is the part of the show where we talk about what we're crushing on, what we're loving, what we just like want to share with the world, you know? Yeah. Something that we just can't keep to ourselves. Flip the last segment on its ass and say, spank, 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 never mind, I love you, kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh, it's tumultuous, if anything. <laughs> it is such... This podcast should be described as tumultuous, tumultuous. <laughs> babe. It is. It really is. Okay. So um, I'm going to go first because I want to. So my crush of the week is a show and it is Welcome to Crappy Lake. I love it. So we had heard a bunch about it. It's um, Luann DeLulu Delisseps and Sonia Captain Morgan from Real Housewives of New New York. I was in New yep. Jersey. Real Housewives of New York from Roni. And, well, the old Roni. There's a new Roni, but we're not going to talk about that. Um, so they used to be on that show, and now they're doing this kind of like fish out of water situation. It's very much reminiscent of The Simple Life with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. That paired up with um, Schitt's Creek, especially in the name. Like Crappy Lake is the name of the lake. I think it's fun and it's cute. But it is Benton, Illinois, and they are just so funny without trying to be funny and i love a fish out of water scenario um did you ever watch the simple life yeah of course did you see season five i didn't watch it like that babe but so maybe. i had i had all the dvds uh all the seasons on dvd in season five they were camp counselors wow i want to watch that episode yeah we should it's the whole season um oh. but nicole richie she was so funny on that show but in season five they were at like a weight loss camp and she would take like all the soda and the candy and the fast food and bring it to the the camper's so cabin. It was it was fucked up. Like they locked one of the refrigerators and she literally like pick got the refrigerator like picked up and brought to someone's room. I was like, that is so bad. But anyway, that's not my crush of the week. My crush of the week is Welcome to Crappy Lake. And I think everybody should go watch it. Go check it out. Um, especially as we are on strike with things. So we can go watch some, you know, reality TV. And I think it's a great time for reality TV. I love reality TV. Yeah, Crappy Lake is so funny, you guys. So like essentially it's like these two rich, eccentric, older women. And they're in this like crazy town of like hicks and southern people. And they're supposed to like bring back commerce and like um tourism to this town. So they have like all these different like activities they're going to be doing for the yeah. whole season it's so cool and i like it too because um it's like one of the producers from the show who worked i'm assuming worked for bravo before yeah um because it's not a bravo show right it is a bravo show yeah oh okay um he is from this hometown and and it didn't do well with covid it just shut down everything so i don't think they had much like traction before and then covid just really fucks them up as many other places so it was a lot more like personal than than if they would have just went to any old town and like you know been like oh look at these rich girls who can't fit in like they actually want the town to do well and like, i think it, you can tell two cabaret singers from the upper west side are now like staying in a motel for five weeks and they're swimming in like a like a creek they were like mud wrestling like fish and they're drinking at the local bar and they're having the best time ever. Like they really just go all in for it. They don't even care. They're like, hey, everyone. And the whole town's like, oh my God, what do we get ourselves into? And what I kind of like is that they're hesitant, but they're not against doing anything. Yeah. And the, and it's like not making fun of the town at all. Like yeah. it's like it really is highlighting it in like a really like positive way. Like everybody's winning here. And there's some love stories going on. Yeah. Like if you want something just absolutely stupid to watch for 22 minutes that will make you genuinely laugh out loud. It's on Peacock. I'm not sure if it's on Bravo, but Peacock owns Bravo. So I don't know if it's on just Peacock, but it's like, it could be on both, but look it up guys. It's a really funny reality show you can watch right now. It's very easy, fun for summer too. And I wish they were a little bit longer. Yeah. But you know what though? Sometimes it's nice to just like get a sweet treat. Not but, a, not a sweet entree. But that was, hey, true words have never been spoken. Mm -hmm. But once the show's over, we're going to be like, damn, we wish there was more. One came out last night. Oh shit. So there's four episodes now. Yeah. Four. Okay. So we have one 
22 minute episode to watch. Yeah, and I liked the first episode of New York, by the way. Also, if you have any Roni fans on the um on on the pod here, I didn't mind the new cast of Roni. We watched the first episode, I liked it. I'm gonna watch the second one. I think I need a little bit more time to process everything. I think I'm just not used to something new. That's I'm just so grateful for things that are new. You know what I mean? Let me just yeah, watch it. I suppose. I that's how I felt about Potomac too. I was like, because we had watched Roni for so long and then we were gonna change it up. And I was like, this is something I haven't seen. And then the, after the first episode, I was like, okay, I fuck heavy with these girls. Like, I love these girls. And we still do to this very day. We do. So um, what's your camper crush of the week? Little different once again. Switching tracks here. My crush of the week are magicians. Wow. I okay. just don't feel like we're giving magicians enough credit. You know, you're kind of right. I just feel like they're these like spooky little bitches and we need to like just really <laughs> elevate them. Like they're professional tricksters. Like they've made a career out of just being like, ooh, gotcha. Like that's funny. Like certain people in this world have like cracked the code and like figured out how to be like just like creepy and weird and like get paid to do it. And like they did that and they've been doing it historically for centuries. Hysterically for and, like, centuries. Hysterically and historically. Hysterically and historically for centuries. Magicians have been bringing joy to the world and i'm here blazing a trail and giving them their flowers today are you pulling it out of a hat yes there is a rabbit in my throat right now and he's working his way up my windpipe i love a magician me too so this was all inspired because i saw uh, my friend kelly friend of the pod happy hey, kelly. kelly everywhere or kelly kelly Dactyl. she's a huge um like content creator online her and her husband do a lot of like like really cool like editing tricks um, but she did this like really cool video where she was, wa she had a, like a, a black outfit on and a clear umbrella and she opened up the umbrella and all this glitter came out of it and it like transformed her outfit. I think there were rose petals. Rose petals. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, it was like pink confetti or rose petals. And it like completely, her whole like black outfit turned into like this like long pink gown. Oh my God. Seamless. It was so, 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 so cool. And it made me think how much I love a quick change artist, mm -hmm. which is under the magician umbrella for sure yeah. for me and i learned a lot about quick change artists really fast it's actually pretty simple like one of the rules is, is like obviously they wear like the biggest outfits on top and they get smaller as they go down because you're covering things up but what i have noticed now when you watch a quick change artist performance is that right before like the next change happens they place their hand wherever the next pull is going to be yeah, I mean, they kind of have to, right? Yeah, but I always thought, like, I didn't, like, obviously, like, I, I thought they'd just be like, doing the same kind of, like, pull over the hat every single time. But, like, no, it's, like, if they're here or if it's, like, down by the hip or up by the shoulder, like, they're ready to pull it at all times. And we love it, like a parachute. But I still can't figure out how they do that big bag of glitter. You know what? I don't want to know. Yeah, that's I, what I... I like, that's how I feel about magicians. Mm -hmm. There was that show, The Magician's Greatest Secrets Revealed. Love that show. Yeah. Because I want to know, as we all do, logically, how things work. But once I know, I'm like, oh, I kind of, it lost its magic. I went to magic school. I know. What did you learn? I learned a lot of card tricks. I don't. I don't think we did much more than card tricks. We were working like heavily on sleight of hand. And then I was like, okay, I'm bored. I'm going to tap dance again. And... So I did. And so you deserve to do. Yeah. But I will say that they use Bicycle, the brand Bicycle, because they have the little air pockets. And it says it on the thing. It says air cushion. And you don't realize you need the air cushion with sleight of hand tricks until you have a deck of cards that is flat. And then you can't you can't slide them. You can't shuffle. You can't do. That's why it's Vegas's favorite deck of cards. It's the Bicycle. Yeah. Bicycle, it has, it has a je ne sais quoi to their cards. I love a card trick. See, this is the thing here magicians can really be kind of they, there's a lot of different kinds right a lot of different kinds of magic tricks i love an illusion yeah i love a card trick mm. i don't love this style of magic where it's almost a little bit too stunty and i can only describe that as the chris angel effect yeah really not so there's like two different kinds of magicians right for me there's a chris angel or a david blaine i personally am a david blainer i'm not a chris angelite who buried themselves alive? Was that David? That's I think definitely giving Chris Angel. Yeah, but I feel like David Blaine would do that shit where he would have like saws cut up the coffin that he was in. I think 
maybe, but that definitely doesn't sound like him. I feel like Chris Angel is the mind freak. He's the one that's going to lay on the ground on glass and have like a steamroller go over him and somehow survive it. Yeah. Like but Chris Angel like would like, he hooked his back with fish hooks and oh. then had a helicopter like lift him over the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I'm sad. And I'm like, this is just uncomfortably painful for, I don't care how you did it. I don't want to watch this. No. And he had a Vegas presidency. Whereas if you look at like clips of David Blaine, he goes on like Jimmy Fallon and he does crazy card tricks and like swallows a goldfish and spits it back up. Like he does a couple of things that look a little painful, but like definitely more of like the dry sense of like sleight of hand, which yeah. I like love. Mm -hmm. I love that. Um, but I just think magicians as a whole, even if I don't love your style, I love what you're bringing to the world. Yeah. It's a sense of magic. It's we need more magic. So Thank you, magicians. I love you so much. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. Welcome back to Camp Songs. This is our song of the week segment, everybody. Camp Songs. This is part of the show where we share with you the songs that have been stuck in our head all week. And you can get these songs for free on um, the YouTube playlist or also the Spotify playlist that are linked in the episode description. And you can hear all the songs of the week from all 46 episodes. Ooh. How incredible. There's a lot there. There's a lot. Jonathan, what is your song of the week? So I was inspired. I don't know if you can tell by what I'm wearing, but we recently went to Maine. We went to uh, visit our friend Josh, who lives up there. And um, we stayed. Where was it that we stayed? Sacco. Sacco? Sacco. Sacco. Um, and we ended up going to Portland and that was really fun. And I let a lobster rolls. I'd never been to Maine before. You obviously had because we're like over here. But the furthest north I had ever been really was Salem, Massachusetts. So it was just a short drive beyond that. But my song of the week is Rock Lobster. Rock Lobster. By the B-52s, y'all. Do you like that song? I do. I love. I just like love the B-52s. I feel like... Most people in my life hate that song. I think the B-52s bring a sort of whimsy and childlike excitement to the music industry at a professional level. Yeah, I would have to 100% agree. So let me tell you a little bit about Rock Lobster. So again, it's by the B-52s. It was written by Fred Schneider and Ricky Wilson. Um, so Rolling Stones came out with the 500 greatest songs of all time. This made the list. Do you want to guess the number? Um, 494. 147. Good for them. I couldn't believe it. Well, you why not? Well, because if you listen to the lyrics and honestly the story behind it, it, there's not a lot of depth to it. And I feel like there are a lot of good songs. Yeah, there, but right? the Rolling Stones, like, that, it's just, it's so like, what is it? Who, who knows what it is? So, fun facts. Uh, Fred Schneider, who is one of the singers and the songwriter of this song from the B-52, said when he was younger, he used to go crabbing with his father but he quickly became vegetarian after feeling like the crabs were his friends. And he was about five years old. Isn't Sounds like you. That does kind of sound like me. Isn't it? Uh, he has, he's a crustaceous at heart. Um, so the song was mostly inspired by the 2001 club in Atlanta, where instead of having a light show, the club projected a slideshow. It, uh, it was pictures of puppies, babies, and lobsters on a grill, which is fun. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my song of the week. Wow, that's a fun summer bop. I love that. I know. I think it's a fun summer bop. What have you got for us? My song of the week is Amber by 311. Oh, 311. Yeah. Is it 311? No, it's 311. Oh, yeah. I was like, God, I feel embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm kind of sticking to the same 90s vibe while I'm here in Massachusetts. Songs of my youth, even though this song came out in 2002. It did? Yeah. I thought I it was think, 90s. No, it's 2001, 2002, depending well, on like, the 90s. if you pick the release time whenever, you know what I mean? But I just think it's like the definition of like a cool, laid back like song. Do you want to sing a little bit for us? Whoa, amber is the color of your energy. Whoa. Like it just, it really, I think I love it so much because it's everything that I'm not. Like no one would ever describe me as cool or relaxed or like groovy. Like I'm high strung, energetic, and I can't focus <laughs> on like just relaxing. Yeah. Like the entire video is a bunch of like hot people at the beach swimming and surfing. And I would be over there like, okay, time for an activity, yard game, yard game, yard game. And everyone's like just 
chill out, smoke a blunt, and relax. And I just, I can't do any of that kind of stuff. No, you need a stimulant. I, I need a stimulant. So I think that's the reason why I like like it so much because it, it just, it's a good, vibey, incredible song. Um, but there was one really cool fact that I wanted to share with you that I read about that I had never known. Okay. Do you know who this song was written about? No. So the lead singer at the time, his name is Nick Hexum. He wrote the song and he was dating none other than Nicole Scherzinger. This is about the lead singer of the Pussycat Dolls. Shut up. So she at the time was in this other group that I didn't write their name down. She was on a reality show that was much like kind of like making the band in the early 2000s. Yeah. It was kind of like a response, I think, to like the Spice Girls. Very much like that, like the US version. And I forgot what their name was, like Aqua Girl or whatever. And she was on that. She's Hawaiian. So like, I don't know if he was there, but I don't know. I don't, that's where the, the video was filmed. So she's in the video. Oh like, my God. They're like in the ocean together. Like, like there's a bunch of girls in and the it video. Was, and it was written about her? Yeah. Were they dating? Yeah, they were dating. I cannot believe this. Yeah, I so never knew that. Nicole Scherzinger's energy can only be described as amber. Yeah, because it's like a Hawaiian sunset and it's shades of gold displayed naturally. Yes, yes, yes. You want to know what brings me here. Imagine like that. And it's like that was like their biggest song of all time. And it like still remains on the airwaves because of its like kind of like summery kind of vibe. But like wherever she is, she knows that that song was written about her. Like that is such a compliment. And for it to be about her, it's just so random. That is so random. I never knew they even dated. I did not know she was in the music video. Yeah. You're going to have to watch the video and then be like, oh my God, there's a young Nicole. Uh Amber is the color of my urine in the morning. Ew. Anyways, that was our <laughs> camp songs. And that was our episode of Camp Counselors with Zachary Porter and Jonathan Carson. Thank you so much. We love you guys. And we'll see you next week. And with that being said, lights, lights out, out campers. campers.